Reads. Miss Suzette, and today we're going to read The Stone Thrower, and this is by Jail Ely Richardson with the pictures by Matt James, and this is with permissions from Groundwood Books. This is a story that happened a long time ago in a place that's far away, unless, of course, you happen to be from a small town in Ohio called Portsmouth. It's a story about a kid who lived in hard times, a kid who had a big dream that seemed almost impossible. Chuck Ely was born in Portsmouth, Ohio in 1950. Back then, there were separate schools and separate restrooms and separate neighborhoods for black people because some Americans didn't believe that all people were equal, regardless of their skin color. Chuck grew up on, in the North End, a neighborhood that was separated from the rest of the town by a set of long, stony railroad tracks. The buildings in the North End were run down and there was nowhere to swim when the weather got hot because the pool was on the other side of the tracks. Chuck's mother had dropped out of school when she was very young. She had to work hard to raise her son all by herself. She worked long hours and she was paid very little. She wanted things to be different for Chuck. Those coal trains that came, that come through, they don't stop here, she said. They don't stop until they get where they're going. I want you to be just like that. Do you remember where you're going, son? Chuck smiled at her with a big, broad grin. I'm going to get out of North End and get my education. She smiled and squeezed him tightly. That's right, she said. When Chuck came home from school one day, he felt his tummy rumbling. He couldn't remember the last time he had eaten, and the only thing that he found in the cupboard was a wheat bar. He chewed and he chomped, but it tasted like twigs. It felt thin and dry in his throat. Worst of all, it, it still left him hungry. How could he get out of North End if he didn't even have enough money for food? Over a crisp fall day, Chuck walked toward the train tracks. He scuffed his shoes against the pavement as the wind whispered gently, as leaves tumbled and danced and cracked beneath his footsteps. Just then, Chuck heard a long, thin whistle in the distance. The ground began to rumble, and the train tracks shook. The stones along the track jumped and bounced like hot kernels of popcorn. Thick gray clouds huffed and puffed from the smokestacks of a train as it chugged down the railroad tracks toward him. Cha-cha-cha-cha, cha-cha-cha-cha, went the train. Cha-cha-cha-cha, cha-cha-cha-cha, it went as the dark coal cars crawled along the tracks like a trail of black ants, each one marked N and W for Norfolk and Western. Suddenly, Chuck had an idea. He selected a stone from the side of the tracks and rubbed it between his fingers. It felt rough like sandpaper. He tossed it in the air and then he caught it. Perfect. As the train charged towards him, Chuck fixed his eyes on the end on one of the coal cars. As the train passed and the wind whooshed against him, Chuck pulled his arm, pulled back his arm and threw the stone as hard as he could. Thud, he missed. He picked up another stone and tried again. Thud. As the last car chugged toward him, Chuck narrowed his eyes as he could see the end more clearly. He shifted back and forth on his toes and he waited. He threw and watched the stone soar. Bang! Chuck smiled and raised his hands in victory. After that day, Chuck often went back to the train tracks. Eventually, he learned to throw the stones just right so that when the train was going by and the wind rushed against them, he could always hit his target. At school and at football practice, Chuck did the same thing. When he learned new things and when he had to do the same thing over and over, he thought about standing by the railroad tracks throwing stones again and again until he got it. One day, his coach asked him to do something important, something that required a kid with determination and focus. Chuck's coach wanted him to play quarterback. 
He wanted him to throw the ball and lead the team on the field. Some people didn't think boys like Chuck were smart enough to play quarterback, but Chuck's coach believed in him, and so did his teammates. But it wasn't easy. At a game against a rival school, Chuck played a team that was lean and mean. The players called him names, and they ran at him with anger in their eyes and in their hearts. Crush him, they cried. Get him, they yelled. With a few seconds left on the scoreboard, Chuck's team was down by five. The team huddled together, heads bent, arms around each other. They didn't want to lose, but there was only time for one more play. Chuck got the ball and looked down the field as one of his teammates started to sprint towards the end zone. A player on the opposite team rushed towards Chuck, quick and steady, hungry for the football, hungry for a tackle. Chuck waited, his feet tiptoeing on the soft grass as the defenseman raced closer and closer. Chuck thought about those days at the railroad tracks, the rush of the train, the feel of the wind, the rumble of the earth underneath him. He narrowed his eyes so that all he could see was his teammate running faster and faster. Chuck threw the ball and it soared through the air. It spiraled down the field, floating, spinning. Everyone waited. Everyone watched as the ball dropped right into the hands of Chuck's teammates as he stepped into the end zone. Chuck smiled and raised his arms. Touchdown victory. Chuck Ely won every game as the quarterback at Notre Dame High School, 27 wins in total. He received a scholarship to the University of Toledo and he won every game there too. 35 more wins and a college degree, the best of all his victories. By 1971, he had won more games than any other quarterback in college football history. It is an unbeatable story that amazes me, even though we've heard it before. Um, unfortunately, Chuck was not able to play in the, Amer in the United States. The National Football League didn't believe that he could be a great quarterback because of the color of his skin. So he moved to Canada to play quarterback in the Canadian Football League. And he led the Hamilton Tiger Cats to the championship, the Grey Cup, in his very first year.